lots of times we are so focused on the short term that we want speed in the short term. And what we fail to realize that depth is what gets results and speed comes from mastery. Welcome to Built to Scale, where we have real conversations with entrepreneurs just like you about what it takes to build a thriving business without sacrificing your personal life. My name is Craig Severinsen, and I help people make more money working with better clients while also working less. And now I'm sharing it all with you. Let's dive in. What is up, everybody? And welcome to episode 14 of Built to Scale. Yes, yes. Uh, definitely welcoming everyone here. I'm your host today, Jason Croft. I'm the producer of Built to Scale, and I am taking the reins from Mr. Craig Severinsen here. And we're going to dig into some reflections on the first season of Built to Scale. We're going to dig into really what Craig's doing uh, right now with his business and then looking forward to season two. Do I have your permission for that, Craig? I guess you already muted me once. I don't have a choice, do I? That's right. I got the power. Welcome to episode 14 of Built to Scale. I am your host for the day, Jason Croft. I'm the producer of the show. Craig, welcome to your own show. Thanks. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, thanks. I feel welcome. <laughs> nice. Uh, Craig and I were talking and we really wanted to kind of dig in and, and give you guys a little bit of behind the scenes of the show, but not just for the sake of, oh, this is interesting, that's interesting, but we really wanted to dig into some things that you could apply in your own business, whether you have a show or not. Um, we'll certainly go through some of those pros and cons of doing that. Um, but I was really interested in some of the shifts I saw Craig making in his business and some some twists and turns there, some tweaks a little bit. And I thought that would be really valuable to all of you. So I wanted to take over the reins here and you know really dig in and, and pull from Craig what he's got going on, um, how the show is working for his business, how maybe some shifts are happening in the future. Sound good with you, Craig? Yeah, and I like this idea because I think that there's a lot of value in just what we do with our clients on a normal basis, or, or I mean, guests on a normal basis, where we're trying to get down to not just what is their expertise, but how are they actually growing their business. And uh, I, I guess starting off here, because um, I have been on the uh, side of the interviewee, or interviewer, now I'm the interviewee. Um, I, I'm going to commit right now to being as transparent and open as possible. So, Jason, dig into this stuff because I think that that that's where we're going to get the most value for you guys is just showing not just what I say I'm doing, but what am I actually doing to grow my business and what's working right now. And uh, I'm excited to to do this with you. Yeah, I think I think that that gets us into this first section that I really wanted to cover was you know some of your reflections on season one of of doing 13 episodes of the show so far. Because there was really this purposeful intent to do exactly what you're talking about and, and get people who come on the show, get them out of the mindset of, I'm going to go sell myself, I'm going to go you know, teach these five steps and all of that, and to really just have a conversation. And, and it's, not, it's not their fault they're doing this in the sense that it's, it's just normal, right? Like if... if you're invited into a room or onto a call and like, hey, what do you do? Well, you're going to go into that mode. And that's a big reason even for this dynamic on how we want to present this. Because, you know, Craig could just hop on the show and tell you about his thoughts on season one, tell you about what he's got going on in his business. But um, by default, I think we all sort of... We, we skim over a lot, right? Because it's yeah. shorthand for us. So... That's really my job here to 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 put on the brakes sometimes and uh, and and dig in a little more. And say, oh, oh, okay, hold on now, <laughs> you know, let's 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 get into that. So, starting off with that, I'd I'd love to know your thoughts about having gone through this process, you know, for thirteen episodes and how, if if at all, you know, it's it's affected, you know, the show has it affected your business? Has it helped in branding? Any of those kind of things. You know, and I think that there's there are actually a lot of layers to that question beyond just what it seems. And I think that's because a lot of what was going on 
behind the scenes with my offer and my business. And so let's let's put a pin in that because I think that that's something that would be fun to circle around to and talk about uh, some of the shifts in my offer that have been made and the process I use to make those decisions. But if we talk in terms of like personally, how has uh, this show gone for me? I just feel like this is an outlet where we get to push the limits of what's possible, right? Like in terms of we, we, I've done live shows, I've done a lot of interviewing, but to put a a flag in the ground and say, I'm not going to put up with um, the staged answers and the smiling faces when the content's really not that great. And and when the, the value is really not that advanced, right? Um, which I feel like is what we normally do. And it's, it's, it's difficult, like you said, not to do that because it's like you put, you put me in front of a camera and I love to perform. I'm a ham. You know what I mean? Like I turn it on. And even for me to try and dial that back and try to get my clients or uh, guests comfortable enough that they're not doing that is difficult. So we do things like, um, like we don't do a countdown when we start the show. We just start because if we say, Hey, okay, we're going to start in three, two, one. It's like they take a breath and they're like, oh, here I am. You know, like they do this big uh, almost presentation. So it's like, yeah, you'll you'll see that that, you know, this great conversation that was going on because they knew we weren't recording. And then some is performance mode. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So we, we do stuff like we don't count down. We prep them way in advance that this is the way it's going to go. It's been great to have something where Jason, you're on the same page as me. And we look at it and we say, holy cow. Um. We're trying to do something really great here and we're trying to be different and it's different for the sake of advancing entrepreneurism. And that personally is really great. So on a personal level, um, it gives me an outlet to do that and push, push my boundaries, push the boundaries. And, and uh, I, I don't know that it feels revolutionary to everybody, but it feels revolutionary to me. Right. Which I think is important to have those projects that feel like meaningful to you. Um Business-wise, it's been great in terms of getting a lot more visibility. So um, when I started the show with Jason, one of my criteria was it's got to pay for itself, right? Like uh, no, no one as a small business owner has money that they can just be throwing at a marketing activity where it's not paying dividends, right? And um, so I wanted to be able to do a show that also paid for itself as it went. And so... Um, in terms of visibility and clients, this has been great because it gets me in front of clients on a regular basis, but people have started to reach out to me because of the show as well. It's also a great icebreaker for potential clients who might also make great guests to be able to reach out to them and say, hey, are you interested in coming on the show and opening that dialogue that can lead to a sale? So it's been all around a really cool experience in both those those categories. You know, that's what's so so fun with the show on that personal side, but also that that business side, that's really important to me. You, you know, I'm the one that does these shows for clients. I do them for myself, but I'm always you know, got that filter on of it's got to, it's got to make money, yeah. right? Even people who come to me for whether it's a show or a, a video project that, you know, they want to shoot a pilot for a reality show and sell it to discover, you know, <laughs> have all these grand plans. And even I stop, I just like, okay, some of them hold on. Some of them. Yeah. yeah. I, I like where you're going, but let's, let's make sure there's a reason for this beyond what you think it's going to get you in terms of, oh, I'm going to sell sponsorships down the road and make a million dollars and stuff like if that happens, icing on the cake. Great. But let's stop. Let's make sure this is worthwhile for you immediately from day one. You know, and I think that there's two types of approaches. One is the idea that you're going to, um, you're going to like have this big event that's going to it just change your life. Right. Like, and I won't, uh, mention companies, uh, by name, but if you're only one something away, <laughs> right, that, that's kind of the idea, right. Where it's like, Oh, just, just this one thing. If I could just do this one thing, it'd be this big event and man, uh, life would change for me. And what people don't realize is that, um, it's a whole bunch of little things that lead up to being able to take advantage of that big event, that big opportunity. It's like raindrops, right? One raindrop doesn't make a big difference. But I'm from St. Louis. We know that if it rains a lot over the course of a lot of days north of us and on us, 
that Mississippi River is going to come over its banks, right? It's going to cause a flood. All those little raindrops, millions of them, will add up to catastrophic floods, right? It's the same in your business. You know, ask yourself the question right now. Could you take on, if I had the power to just drop 10 clients in your lap, 100 clients in your lap, 1,000 clients in your lap right now, could you actually could you actually handle that? Could you handle 1,000 people signing up right now for your services? For most people, that's that's a no, right? But it's a lot easier if you've put in that consistent work to get one client, two clients, three clients a month and build up to 100 clients to then have a big event and say, oh, 100 people are going to sign up. Well, guess what? The infrastructure is there. So the consistent effort over time prepares you to take advantage of the opportunities of the big events. You know, the big events are inevitable. They come. But uh, the question is, can you really capitalize on it or not, right? And so the, the the little steps are a lot more important and a lot more powerful than just a, oh, I'm going to do this thing and it's going to blow up and I'm going to be a millionaire. That almost never happens. I mean, it doesn't happen. Yeah. And and that's what's, that's what's great with the, the perspective of, you know, putting a show together too is – having that commitment of a certain amount of time, a certain amount of episodes, you know, yeah. go through that. You know, Tim Ferriss is famously, you know, when he, he started his podcast, he committed to, you know, six episodes, 10 episodes, whatever it was of like, you know, and he would have stopped after episode two if he hadn't made that prior commitment because he didn't see, you know, that immediate like, oh, this is uncomfortable. This is new territory. And I think that lesson can be applied to a lot of activities in our business, right? On whether it's an outreach program or some new marketing tactic, give that commitment to get enough you know, stack enough wins to actually get some data in and see if this is a good thing or not. And you know what you what you just went into for for folks it is a great transition into really what you're you're doing for folks right now which i mean that's been your specialty with your program and everything like that is to you know get people to to go from being that solopreneur to really having a, a business yeah. and having those systems in place has how is that you alluded to that earlier of, of like things have been kind of shifting and morphing a little bit what's the the current state of of your main offering right now um you know and as as we before we move into that i want to point out one thing in what you said too i think lots of times we are so focused on the short term that we want speed in the short term and what we fail to realize that depth is what gets results and speed comes from mastery Right. So if you if you want speed and growth, what you have to do is focus on less things more deeply. Right. And as you develop mastery in that, you, you build up, you build up, you build up, you build up. And that that's so. Yeah. So now let's transition to what, what's the current state of my offerings? You know, I think that this has a lot to do with alignment as well, because um, I like to say that I was a consultant building a coaching company um, and I felt out of alignment with my business for a long time. And I think that that can even be reflected in season one of this show where the content was really, really great. But if you guys went to my website, there's no there's no call to action. There's nowhere to sign up for an email. And uh, I would go back and forth with my designer on, she'd keep coming to me and be like, Craig, uh, we need that. Season, season one is coming up. We need that giveaway. What are you gonna do? Craig, season one is live. We need that giveaway. What are you going to do? Craig, the season's almost over. You didn't do it. What's going on? And I just kept dragging my feet because I was out of alignment with what I was doing and I didn't really want to sell it, right? Like that's when we come down to it, that's what, what, well, this is, this is if we get really specific, right? Um, I had built a biz or a, a program, a coaching program that could have grown to hundreds of people, but every time I'd get to like 10 people and I'd say, I don't want any more. This is it. This is the number of people I want. And then I would shut down and not want to sell. And when I really looked at that, what I realized was that I really didn't like how the coaching industry was built to cram a ton of people into a group program where most of them don't get results. And they really focus on like the top 5% that are getting good results. And it just perpetuates in this like incestuous cycle of coaches, coaching coaches, and only a few people getting results and watered down coaching, you know, because the coaches are coaching coaches. It's like this watered down methodology and just thinking like, that's not me. That was not what I was all about. And so that led me to the transition of uh, 
really focusing on the framework for growing a business. So um, that led me to really outline uh, what are the foundational pieces of having a thriving business and what are the systems you need to have in place in order to scale a business and creating a framework that someone could take and they could implement it their way to their business and see their business succeed. And so that's where I've really put a lot of my time and focus. And that's where the business has pivoted from being like, a, let's buy time with Craig because he's a great coach to, man, I love the framework that uh, Craig and his company have for growing a business. And I want to implement that in my own personal business so that I can scale and I can yeah. grow and I can have freedom. That's a monumental shift, honestly, because um, somebody just casually listening may think like, okay, that's kind of semantics, right? Wordplay a little yeah. bit, but it's it's really a monumental shift. It's going from, I'm going to go hire Craig, the coach, because he helped so-and-so with their company to, oh, wow, I'm going, I'm buying into the to the built to scale system here that is actually going to transform my business. And then that expertise, that one-on-one -on -one time, whatever, however much there is of Craig, that's, that's icing, right? You know, that is yeah. layering in that expertise along the way, but here's this concrete thing. And I, honestly, I, I mean, I've heard that feedback from other coaches and coaching programs that they really had to shift because, their clients liked him. They got, I was listening to one guy today and he was talking about, he got that phone call that you don't want to get, which is, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like you, but I'm just kind of like <laughs> floundering around in here. There's no system yeah. that I'm going through. And that's ultimately, especially the higher ticket you go, they want a system for results. They're coming to you yeah. so that they can shortcut that result. Well, and let me, let me, uh, look at this from two points of view, right? So, so kind of what you're saying. So the two points of view are from my point of view as a business owner, why did I make these decisions and my point of view and point of view as a client and getting value, right? So, um, point of view from me as a business owner going into these shifts, one of the major drivers for it was I was the bottleneck of my business. And so one of the major drivers for me to start making changes was how do I remove myself as the bottleneck and create a business that could be a legacy for my kids that maybe I could sell one day, or maybe I could uh, and put a CEO and be on the board, or maybe I stay the CEO, but it's, it's easy for me, right? Like how do I create a business like that? That gives me that, that flexibility um, when I am a lot of the value brought to the table, right? So, so the conundrum there was how do you remove Craig, which, at the moment, why were people purchasing to have time with me? So how do you remove the value while simultaneously making the offer more valuable? That was a, you know, a, a catch 22 that was um, interesting to deal with. But by making the switch, um, now my business is in a position where as a business owner, I can grow it as big as I want to. And I'm no longer the bottleneck in that system. Now let's view it from, from the uh, point of view of, of a client. You know, you come in kind of like what you say, you come into coaching and there's nothing really wrong with coaching. I've used coaches, but there is something, there is a season for when you need certain coaches or certain things. And lots of times we get into these coaching relationships and then they stall out or then we start spinning our tires and we don't get moving the way we want to get moving. And uh, the solution is, or the blame is you're not committed enough. You're not trying hard enough. You're not implementing well enough. And that that's just not always true. Sometimes it's true, but it's not always true. Sometimes the framework, the foundation for accomplishing what you're trying to accomplish is not in place. So now you're buying a business growth system called the built to scale framework. And you can take that framework and you can implement it into your business and have that foundation. You know, we call it a framework for a reason. It gives you that, that ability to then grow your business um, the way you want it to grow, right? Because you've got a good foundation and framework to give you that way, a new way to think about how do I grow my business? How is that getting delivered? Essentially that, that framework. Okay. So it's split into two different sections. So the foundation of a thriving business and the six systems of a scaling business. So the foundation, like this is what you need to have in place in order just to have a business that 
is profitable, right? So the three pieces are a hyper-focused niche, a scalable offer, you know, an offer that can actually get you to like multiple six figures or even seven figures, and then uh, your positioning in the marketplace, which we call expert positioning. Uh, that's the foundational piece, right? You got to get those three things in place. They're not necessarily things that you set and forget and never revisit, but they're things that are very slow to change, right? Like, because if you're constantly changing your offer, you're constantly changing your positioning, the marketplace doesn't know what to do with you. They get confused. So they're things that you put in place and then you, you keep them for a long time. You don't, you don't change. Um, and then the six systems are uh, the pieces of your business that if you want to now, so you've got the foundation to make sales and make money. Now the question becomes, how do we grow this to a point where you're making the amount of money that you really want to make, right? So it's not just about being profitable. It's about being really, really profitable. <laughs> and, and it's also about how do you like get the freedom in your life that you want. Now I, I talk about three areas, freedom of financial freedom, freedom of time and freedom of impact. So do you have the time to live the way you want to live, spend time with the people you want to spend time with? Or um, do you have the freedom to make the impact on the world or your community or whatever, uh, the way that you want to impact them? And so these six systems are the pieces that need to be in place and functioning in your business in order for it to, to grow and scale. And so when you create these systems and think about your business as a, as a collection of systems, um, you can start to, to put team in place and be very confident that they're going to perform the way you would perform. Um, you can start tweaking things and changing things so that they get better and better and better. And it's again, it's it's the whole idea is changing the way you think about your business in order to grow it. So uh, the way it's delivered, if we get into nitty gritty, there's a, like a DIY version that is like uh, courses. There's a uh, version of like with, with accountability and coaching calls, and then there's a one on one. You can work with me directly uh, type of version and. The point, though, is all three of those things revolve around that framework. It's just where are you at in your business? How do you work best in order to implement those things? So it's it really seems like like some people may be already in in their business at a level that just that that second one that you described, that second framework you described, like they would kind of start from there, right? If they're already built up to a certain level. So if you're already making uh, a good amount of money, like over six figures, um, then, then yeah. Well, so this is a complicated question because what I found is that to get to six figures and to pass six figures, lots of times the offer needs to change a little bit. So that's one of those moments where if you're like a solo pro and you're getting at or close to six figures, or if you've built a small team and you're at or past six figures and you're like, okay, how do we, how do we now make the leap to that next level? How do we get to like multiple six or seven figures? Lots of times your offer needs to shift a little bit. So it's a good time to go back and look at your foundation, those foundational pieces and say, okay, are we looking at the right niche? Do we have the right offer? Are we positioned correctly? And and really small tweaks, again, because if, you, if we were to completely shift that foundation, the whole building would come down, right? Like if, you, if you're selling... Uh, medical widgets and then suddenly you're selling in industrial widgets like it would just it's not compatible right it would just fall apart so you've got to uh make small tweaks and lots of times it's the way that you're you're packaging or positioning your offer that makes it more scalable to then go to that next level so yes and no if you've got the that foundation in place no we're not going to reinvent the wheel but most people need at least a review of it and some small tweaks and then the systems are like the big the big focus. I got it. So yeah, that makes, that makes sense because it's not, it's not a matter of you're going to do this thing for your business and, or this thing for your business. It's, it's just how much of each you're going to do like that. It's almost a, like you said, a tweaking process in that first system. If you've already reached a certain revenue, you know, a certain amount of team and things like that. And you may, you're going to be way heavier on that second half but yeah. you're still going to go through that process and, and tweak. And well, I was going to say, and if you think about foundations as like, um, you know, I've grown up with my parents, they buy and flip houses and they have rental properties. And so since I was 15, they've taken me to these like uh, buildings they've purchased that are not in the best shape. And, and I've helped them fix them up. And sometimes you go into a basement and the wall is just like 
falling in, right? Like the, the foundation is just falling in. And to fix that, they've got to go outside and like build pylons outside, actually pull the wall back to where it needs to go. And if you think about your business foundation as being like not a living thing, right? Like the ground is moving, the marketplace is evolving. If you're not evaluating that and checking its health on a regular basis, let's say a yearly basis, then you're very likely that the wall's going to fall in and the, and the thing's going to collapse. Like, let's look at Blockbuster, Toys R Us, huge companies that did not check the health of their foundation and ended up going bankrupt. Right. Yeah, and like it wasn't. It wasn't there. I mean, they had all the systems, they had all the things that worked forever, but it was that living, yeah. <laughs> breathing aspect of everything around it that shifted. And imagine, yeah. imagine if Toys R Us had really gotten in heavy when Amazon was getting in heavy about the online marketing. Toys R Us, instead of investing in their own website, decided to just let Amazon sell their stuff. Imagine if Toys R Us had said, you know what? We're looking at the future and the foundation is changing. In stores, are not going to be as big as, as they once were. Let's start going that way. You know how different could they could they have ended up in the long run, right? Yeah, there was some there was some last gasps of like partnering with Target and have a Toys R Us section of Target. There, you know, and yeah. even that just went away at the last minute. Yeah, imagine if they had gotten out ahead of of all of that. And that's yeah, it's 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 tough and that's that's hard and all of that stuff. But it it makes for great examples for all of us to look at. <laughs> And be, yeah. you know, and, and you can see Target of. and Walmart right now are doing a very similar thing. So what's the future of in-person shopping when you've got like a digital, you know, do- digital ordering, you've got uh, delivery to your door, you've got companies like Amazon now opening brick and mortar buildings where they just you check out on your phone, and you just walk out, you know, like what's the future of the brick and mortar grocery store? Look at what Walmart and Target are doing and they're testing, especially Walmart a ton of different stuff to see what's going to be the future. That's what we're talking about. Like it, it's, they're looking at the foundation and saying, uh, what, what's going on here? Yeah. And this, this is, yeah. And this is another, it, it may feel like a rabbit hole, but this is all, this is, this is good stuff though, in terms of how this, this applies to business, because, um, this is another key point in all of this too, because Walmart has also not gone, uh, looked at the headlines and gone, oh no, um, everything's online and shut all their stores and shifted all their, you know, everything to online. And, you know, just from the reaction of some headlines, because even though online, online, online has been in front of us for, for years now, when you look at the actual percentage of, yes, it's on the rise, it's going crazy. And that's why they're paying attention. That's why they're working towards it, but they're not throwing their current business in the trash, which is yeah. back to your original point of not just shifting off or shifting off or shifting off or right and left, but really paying attention to the marketplace, see what's coming, but making that shift in a smart way, testing small pieces and evolving your business over time. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's interesting to watch Walmart in particular because they, uh, they're dealing with a really complex issue, you know, like, um, this is almost like um, their consumers say one thing, but act a different way, right? Like, so I think if you were to ask any normal, per- like, well, I guess my 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 age ish or older, they're gonna say, I want cashiers, I want them in there. But then, like, what what are we doing? We're, then we're ordering online, and then we're getting stuff delivered by Amazon. You know what I mean? So it's like they're dealing with a marketplace that is both volatile and changing, as well as not sure is what they want. And so to see them being very both bold in terms of testing out a bunch of ideas, but also cautious in terms of this is our core offering and we're not just going to throw the baby out because because you could do the baby out with the bathwater is the end of that uh, <laughs> that sentence because uh, they you've got the two extreme knee jerk reactions, right? Oh, look at the headlines. Everything's online. That's not true. We're sticking the course. That's what Blockbuster did, right? Lose out. The other extreme would be, oh, my goodness, we're going all online, close everything down. Well, Marketplace wouldn't support that either, right? So, like having that middle ground of being able to evolve with the marketplace and be a leader in that space is is what really what you want to do, and that comes from conversations with your ideal clients and consistent health checks of your foundation. Yeah, absolutely. So, going back to to, to that offer that that you described as well, um, 
you know, it's for every anybody listening, you know, we're we're going through a description of how we're, you know, you're shifting from it being Craig the coach to this built to scale framework and model. And yet that delivery system sounds traditional, right? It sounds traditional when, okay, at this level, it's courses at this level, there's some coaching at this level, there's some one-on-one coaching. What's, what's that, that shift? What's that differentiator there? Yeah. And I think that this comes down to what are you buying? Are you buying, um, access to a coach or are you buying a framework with support from a coach? And again, maybe it's, maybe it's nuanced, but the difference is, is profound in terms of when you buy access to a coach, you're just beholden to, I can't tell you how many coaches I've had where it's like, they give me advice one day and the next day it's like the winds change, their opinions change their, you know, whatever. I'm getting a completely different advice here. Um, and that is, you know, so that it comes down to like, do I trust the coach, which is really important, but, but that's really what it comes down to. And and when the flavors change, the flavors change versus when we're working from a framework of here's how we're building your business. Here are the key pieces to it. And here's a troubleshooting um, process for making sure that that those pieces are working. Um, And the coach is there to just help guide through and help overcome obstacles. You're buying the framework, not the coaching. And the coaching is how you get the support, you get the troubleshooting, you get the you get the implementation done quicker, quicker because you've got somebody holding your hand and helping you get through it. And today, that might be Craig doing the coaching. Tomorrow, it might be one of three other people, four other people as that as that grows. Yeah, and it wouldn't matter to to you because the the expertise is coming from the system and the framework, right? And the the uh, as long as the person is experienced and knowledgeable. Yeah, they're 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 going to be able to walk you through that. Yeah, totally. So again, so, I mean, look at that from two points of view. Me as a business owner saying, "Oh, how do I remove myself as a bottleneck?" And and me as a business owner wanting the best for my clients. So from a client's point of view, oh, how do I get results? We're basically baking in an inevitability of results as long as you follow the process, right? Yeah, and and there's a there's a discipline as a business owner that that comes with having to do this, even if you're sitting there going, you know what? If I just have four or five clients, I can handle them all. That's all I really want. Fine. There's a discipline that comes from putting systems in place that even if you don't replace yourself, if you build the systems where you could, you really get past this gut level. I'm going to give somebody some advice on the day, however it sounds, or they're at stage X in their business this is where we are according to the framework and I'm going to evaluate them. Even if I'm still doing it all, wow, is that stronger? And again, better result for your client, better result for you as a business coach, not yeah. f- trying to figure it out on the day. Well, and here's a great example of what you're talking about, like uh, the financial system. Um, so financial management system is what we call it. If you want to experience instant abundant abundance, right? Like feel feel like you've got more money, uh, manage your finances better. Like when you know how the money flows through your business, you've got a process for collecting it. You've got a process for for uh, managing it. You got a process for spending it. I know that that sounds maybe like, um, especially for entrepreneurs, like we're all about like free spirits, right? And I'm probably the most free spirit as 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 a uh, categorically as my mind works, like I rail against rules, right? Um, But by having the discipline to say, here's how that works, one, you can hand it off to somebody else and have confidence that they're going to do it, right? You can hire that CFO to run your financial system because now the system's in place. They're not going to rip you off because if they're not following the system, you're going to know, right? Like you got a lot more confidence in that person. You got a lot more confidence in what you want to get done, getting done. But two, like you just instantly start feeling those results because you're managing your money in a in a better way, right? You're telling it where to go. Yeah, that's good. How do you how do you build and grow your built to scale brand in the in, in the way that you are? And even if there's there's some new ways um, by being the face by teaching folks by having a show like this how do you how do you build up what you're trying to build 
and still not be just the delivery <laughs> system of it? So I think the two things, right? So one is that my personal like zone of genius is in teaching, presenting, and being that face of the company. So as I get more systems in place, and as I get more team in place, that frees me up to focus on my zone of genius, which is being the face of the business. Um, and by making the deliverable not access to me, but access to a framework and someone to help you implement that framework, that removes the bottleneck portion. And they still get to enjoy my zone of genius. Um, maybe not, I mean, if you if you want to join the one-on-one program, right? Like there's there's an option to do that, but like you still get Craig's zone of genius, you just get it in a different way, right? That is that is that I'm able to provide it on a larger scale. And we're seeing that more and more. We're seeing more and more examples of people being the face. So I mean, if you think of if you think of click funnels, you think Russell Brunson. He's yeah. the face of click funnels. But when I sign up for click funnels, I don't expect to get on a phone call with Russell Brunson and have him set up my account and go through the go through all of that. Oh. And so I think it's important to call these things out because those are those are blocks we all have, whatever stage we're in. Even if we're we already have a company that that has a system and it's its own thing. Sometimes those folks get the advice of you need to step up and be the face of a brand because you know we need we need that human to connect to because we don't quite understand what your offering is and it's going to expedite things. So I really wanted to address that fear that even those folks have of okay, well if I do that, how is that you know yeah. how is that going to affect everything else? Yeah, and I think that the answer to that question is just what we just said, right? Having your deliverable be different than. I mean, for it, it depends on how big you want to grow your business, right? If you are, if you want your business to work with like ten clients a year, and they're buying because they like you, then then having your personal brand and your deliverable be very intertwined is totally fine. But if you're wanting to grow and and work with twenty, thirty, a hundred, two hundred clients, then it's got to be a separate thing, you know. And think about, um, you basically, you're the face of the company, but you're selling something else. You're not selling yourself. And to me, here's the other thing too, to me, that was really important. Like, why didn't I call my business like severance and consulting or something like that? I called it Brightworks training. The reason I did that is because I didn't want to ever be in a position where I might want to sell my name, or I didn't want to be in a position where it's like my name and the brand were intertwined. Um, I, I had a, a, a coach that I was working with and he was a, a really big name in the industry and he ended up selling his company and the company was his name. And he was like, he hated it because he'd walk around the office and they'd say, that's not how this name does it. And he'd be like, they're not talking about me. They're talking about the business, but my name and the business are so intertwined that I can't pull them apart. And I didn't ever want that to happen to me. So like, yeah, you can have your personal brand, and then uh, make sure your deliverables are separate. And so to me, the question I always ask myself is, if I were to sell my business, is this something that I'd want to sell? So like things like my YouTube channel, which is under my name, guess what? That's Craig Severinsen, right? We talk about Built to Scale. We talk about Brightworks Training, but it's Craig Severinsen branded, right? And then you've got, um, you've got things like um, the book that I'm working on or this podcast where it's like, if I were to sell it, those assets would go with the business, right? So, so that goes under the Brightworks brand, and that's how I separate those two things. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I like to. I just wanted to to have that that clarity, um, and just get your thoughts on that moving forward. If you know how much that pl- played into you know those decisions as, as we go forward. Uh, this is episode, you know one of season two, <laughs> you know, in episode 14 here of the show. What's, what can people expect for, for season two of this um, in terms of both the show guests coming on and all of that, um, but also the integration with the the show and your business? Yeah. So uh, first of all, we've recorded a lot of the episodes already and the caliber of guests coming up guys it is insane. We're talking about very successful people with a lot of really good content coming your way. So if you are just looking for inspiration, motivation, tips and tricks to grow your business, uh, this sh- season two is going to be, uh, I was going to say, it's going to be lit. 
<laughs> I, I don't know that I'm, you know, maybe I'm getting told to say stuff like that, but it was, aw- it's going to be awesome. It's going to be really, really good. Um, in terms of integration uh, with the business also, you're going to be seeing, um, I've been doing a daily show on LinkedIn. Uh, we're at season, or episode 10 of that daily show. And uh, they're about 10 minutes long. It's just me talking. Um, and we're going to start bringing those into the Built to Scale podcast as well. So those, those little kind of like mini episodes, we call them outside marketing on LinkedIn. We haven't really decided exactly how those are going to integrate into the podcast, but you're going to start seeing a lot of more uh, solo episodes with just me coming out that are those. So if you want to tune in live on LinkedIn, it's at 8.30 a.m. Central Time um, every day on LinkedIn. Just connect with me, Craig Severinson. Um, and then I think just now that we've got, you know, being really honest, now that I am more in alignment with my offer and my marketing, I think you're just going to see a lot more cohesion in terms of this is why we do the show. This is where you can get more support if you want more support. And these are your next steps for your business. I think you're just going to see a lot more clarity on how to get support and how to work with me if you want to work with me. Yeah. And, and even based on the, the guests we've we've talked to already on this, there's... I've already seen that that alignment, you know, from an outside point of view between who you're bringing on, what they can teach and bring to the table to your existing clients. Like there's even more of a, a, a mesh there um, for folks that's I think is really strong. When you're in alignment, people start showing up in your life that uh, that maybe you weren't ready for. And we've got some really cool guests coming up. I, I can't I can't believe how cool um this content is going to be how valuable it is. It's great. Yep, absolutely. Well, this has been fun. Thanks for letting me uh, take over the show. Dig I in. Do Give it back, Jason. This is my show. No, not until the next episode. And until then, take some fast, focused, imperfect action. We'll see you next time. My line, Jason. Thanks so much for listening. If this episode helped you, share with someone who needs to hear it as well. For more information on how you can work with me and great resources for your business, head over to builttoscalehq.com. Join us next time for Built to Scale. And until then, take some fast-focused, imperfect action. I believe in you. I got your back. We'll talk soon.